I look like a trailer park bum, that that's okay because I was born in one. No problem with that at all. Let's talk about air conditioning today. Let's get started. The reason why I came up with that is because Mrs. Wizard just told me that I look like a trailer park bum with my Crocs on and my t-shirt all raveled and not looking all smooth looking, but that's okay. All my life as a child I grew up in a trailer. I don't care. No problem with that at all. You're catching me on the weekend, this is my weekend bum clothes. So now we're getting into hot weather and I'm getting a lot of phone calls lately about my air conditioning is now blowing hot air or not blowing at all. And the theme is on this video is my AC has quit. What's next? What, what can I expect? What's about to happen? How much money am I getting ready to spend? That's what we're going to talk about today. Okay, so Wizard, what do I do? This thing is blowing nothing but hot air. Well, actually, it's not even really blowing air at all. What's wrong? Ha, ha, ha. Funny, Mrs. Wizard. That makes sense because it's not even running yet. But Daniel's son was working on it this weekend, made even more progress. Not enough for a video yet, but we're getting there to the next video. I'm excited to start this thing up with the new fuel injection. I think it'll run so much better. But no, there's no AC on this Ferrari. And many of you out there may be driving a car as well that just lost its air conditioning and you're wondering, it's getting hot and this pisses me off. This is the, like the worst time that this can happen. And I'm gonna tell you right now, your AC will work all year long just until it gets 99 outside. Then it will stop. That's how it happens every single time, I promise. It's kind of like how fuel pumps die when your gas tank is full. Yes, right after a fill up is when fuel pumps die 99% of the time. So don't get scared every time you fill up. Don't just leave that with you. Let's head on over to a really cool car that shows a lot of pieces and parts we're going to talk about today. It's easy to show in this car. So this is a 1993 Dodge Viper and it's in here for a few small items and it'll be out of here again. But this is the perfect vehicle to show you some air conditioning parts. They're pretty easy to see. But the first scenario we're going to visit, there's only a few, but the first one we're going to visit is your AC is hot all the time. It doesn't matter if you're on the highway or the city, whether there's a tornado outside or not, it doesn't matter. Your AC is hot all the time. One of the reasons why this can happen is Freon is partially or completely gone out of the system. I know it's called refrigerant. I know that it's not Freon. That's something from the 1950s, but I don't care. I'm going to call it Freon. The system has a pressure switch and it checks to see that there's pressure there before you're even allowed to have air conditioning. If you turn on your AC and the switch says, bro, there's nothing here, it's all gone. There's no Freon left. Then you get hot air. It's not even gonna turn on, it's not gonna do anything. Most of the time when ACs quit, they're probably just a little low on Freon. So the next question I get when I say, well, probably your system is a little low on Freon or it could be completely empty on Freon. And they say, well, where did it go? Where's my Freon? It didn't have any puddles on the ground. No, it's a gas. There's not going to leave any puddles. It is a liquid under extreme pressure. But in atmospheric pressure like we're in right now, it turns into a gas. You don't see it. It's gone. One of the things that can contribute to a loss of Freon is the condenser fan has quit. It's no longer cooling the Freon. It's supposed to take the heat out of the system. You're sitting at a red light on a hot day. It's 104 outside and the pressure gets so high that it blows the safety valve, which is usually on the back of the compressor, so that you don't blow up your whole car. It blows off the safety valve and there went all your Freon. And lastly, there could be a puncture. You could have hit something and punched a hole in the condenser. There could be a, a hole punched in one of the steel or aluminum lines. I've actually seen people have a battery cable that's right touching on an air conditioning line and it rubs and it rubs until it rubs through the insulation and then it shorts out, melts a hole in the line, and then goes all the Freon. 
Let's take a look at a few of these real quick before we move on so that you don't get confused. The compressor is always located at the front of the engine on the serpentine belt or the V-belt. It's ran right next to your alternator, your power steering belt. But here is a compressor, and this one doesn't necessarily have a safety valve. This car might have had one somewhere else located on the vehicle, but usually on the back of the compressor there's a little brass. It looks like a little nut on the back of the compressor. Here's a picture of one. And all that does is just sit as a safety at 400 PSI, usually sometimes 450. That valve will let loose and your Freon goes out into the air. You do not want the system to get to five and six, 700 PSI and really have a blowout. It, it could cause damage or injury. The next thing I mentioned was a seal possibly leaking, an O-ring. This is off of an old 1980s vehicle. This is a condenser we're going to show. But here we have an O-ring, a really tiny one. There's O-rings all over air conditioning systems. Here's a really large one to give you an idea. I always upgrade to these green HMBR O-rings. They're much better material. Here's a condenser. As you can see, it has very thin pipes that run all through this, and there's also metal pipes that run off throughout the system. You could be driving down the road, and a, a rock falls out of a dump truck and goes through your grill, and bam, right into this thing. You can puncture it, and psh, there goes all your Freon there. Let me show you where the condenser is located. So we switched to an 82 Corvette real quick to show you guys where a condenser is. It sits right in front of the radiator. Here's our radiator, but in front of that is your condenser. You can see there's one right there. It's got the little fins on it. It goes all the way across the front of the radiator. You can see it over here. You can see this has what's called a pancake compressor, and here's these metal lines I'm talking about. There's more metal lines over here for air conditioning. You could see that a positive battery terminal could touch that and melt a hole in it. It's just aluminum. So be careful with that as well. Or it could just be punctured by someone who just worked on your car who's not very proficient and they slipped their wrench and punched a hole in it. I've seen that happen before. Another scenario is that maybe all the refrigerant is in the system and it's ready to go, but it still doesn't work because there are mechanical or electrical failures in the system that are not allowing it to work. So how does an AC compressor turn on and off? Well, as you can see right here, the belt would go on this pulley and it spins all the time when the engine's running. But it's not turning the compressor inside of it, it's just spinning the outside only. And it's not going to turn on the compressor until Several demands have been met, the pressure switch I just mentioned, showing that there's Freon present, and that all the electrical portions of the system, the relay, the power, the grounds, everything's intact, obviously. So your engine's sitting here running, but your AC's not on until you turn it on. And this is called the clutch. Watch what it does when I put power to it, guys. It moves in and out. I'll go ahead and put it on permanently. And now when I turn the pulley, look at that guys, the whole thing is turning. The entire compressor inside of your everything is now pumping refrigerant. The compressor is 90% mechanical. There's only a small portion that's electrical and that is engaging or disengaging it from the belt drive. You see these wires right here, they go to the clutch. It's a magnetic clutch. When you put power to it, it turns on the compressor. When you take power away, it turns it off. If that fails, the rest of the system might be fine. So Wizard, can you buy just that one part? You can. And I've replaced that for a few people in the past. And by the time you get the clutch and all the mechanism here and then the labor for me to pull the compressor off, pull this all apart, put the new one on, I was frequently hearing, I could have bought a new compressor for that price. And after about the 10th time, I said, you know what, you're right. You guys are right. From now on, if this fails, you just get a new compressor. It makes sense. 
Now you're good to go for a long time, much longer time, and you didn't spend any more money. Okay, lizard. My car, whenever I turn on the air conditioner, it makes this horrible grinding sound. What's going on? There again, and this is also a problem that I've heard of before many times, everything in the system is good. It probably has the right amount of Freon, but the compressor now is not electrically failed. It is now mechanically failed. The pistons or the little things inside of this body have failed and they've seized up solid. They will not turn anymore. They're seized up tight. So now it's nice and quiet until you try to engage that clutch. And if this is seized up inside, it's going to scrape, it's going to grind this clutch. It could also make the belt squeal like crazy. And then you turn your AC off and the noise goes away. That's a 99% of the time chance that the compressor is seized up. Do not keep turning it on. You could throw your belt, you could break something. So Wizard, what happens if my belt breaks? On most cars today, if it's a serpentine belt, if it breaks, you will lose everything. You'll lose power steering, you'll lose your alternator, your water pump, your, you're probably gonna be pulled over on the side of the road calling a tow truck. This is one of those scenarios also, if it has seized up solid, that you will get quoted from this shop an entire AC replacement. All of it. The condenser, the compressor, the expansion valve, or the orifice tube. You get a system flush, this receiver dryer, everything, all brand new. Because the events that led up to this thing seizing will have sent metal shrapnel through all of the system. Every manufacturer of these AC systems say clearly when you order the parts, warranty is voided if you don't replace all of the system if there's a mechanical failure. If you just throw another compressor on and those pieces that are floating in the system are now going to get into the new compressor and destroy it as well. And when you go crying for a warranty, you're going to be like, okay, we want to see the receipt that the receiver dryer, the expansion valve, the condenser, everything was replaced. And you're going to be like, well, I didn't have the money for that, so I didn't get all that done. And they're going to be like, too bad. No warranty for you. Imagine having glitter mixed with oil all through, like this condenser I just showed you, all through those fins. Modern condensers, that was an old one. That one could probably be flushed, but modern condensers have passages that are so tiny that you cannot flush it out. You can't. One more thing that can cause it to fail is just the switch is bad. Let me show you what the switch looks like. So I mentioned a switch a minute ago that checks the system to make sure there's pressure or even refrigerant present. And that's this. There's a couple wires. Sometimes they have three or four wires going to them. But just this little piece right here. That can go bad and fail so that when you turn on your AC, the system says, nope, not happening. There's no refrigerant present, even though there is. It's just getting a bad signal, and this could be bad. If that's bad, you can just buy the switch and replace it, and usually it doesn't involve having to drain the whole system. So it's really not that big of a deal if that's all that's wrong. Okay, wizard. When I'm on the highway, it's running great. I'm cold. Uh, it feels great. I get to a stoplight or get into the city and it just starts blasting me with hot air. What's wrong? Today's cars, especially Honda Civics, Toyota Corollas, the smaller cars that have smaller capacities, they're very sensitive to their refrigerant level, even down to an ounce. So the idea that you can go to Walmart and buy seven cans of Freon and just pump it in there and say, it's not working. That's not how you do these systems. They're very sensitive. Let me show you the AC machine I have. Here you go, wizard. Here's R2-D2. Yes, my AC machine. This machine is capable of measuring Freon or refrigerant to a tenth of an ounce. It is extremely sensitive, very accurate. You can tell it to put 1.625 pounds of Freon. It is that accurate. In today's cars, you have to have that accuracy with this machine. On an older car like that Lincoln or some of the older cars, if they've been converted to 134, yeah, you can put a half a can of Freon in it from Walmart and you probably will get it cold air. You can't do that on the newer cars, guys. You'd be surprised. I've had cars come into the shop where the owner says the AC isn't working. 
I hook my machine up, I look up the specs and say maybe it should be 1.1 pounds in a small car. And after it gets done, it says, okay, we got all the, all the refrigerant out. There was 7.3 pounds in the system. I'm like, what? what? How? And you call them up. I actually get angry with the customers. Like, you have to tell me what's going, what did you do to this car? I can't go any further till we know what happened here. Oh, well, my buddy's friend knows a friend who knows a guy who's a certified tech and they bought seven cans of Freon at Walmart and tried it out. It's like, you could have blown this thing sky high. So really, it's cheaper. Just take it to the shop, guys. It really is cheaper, I'm telling you. Environmentally, it's safer. If you make a mistake and blow all the Freon out into the environment, that's not good for the environment. This system captures it all, and when the tank is full, I have it taken care of by a company that comes out and gets rid of that for me. Another scenario is a clogged condenser. You can see this one already has little bugs and things all mashed into the fins. This can get so bad where it's 80% clogged. You can wash these out. Usually try to reverse wash it and blow all the debris out. Or you can use shop air. I actually have some tools that are made to get in behind and blow all the debris out. But that is a very common scenario where it physically can't get enough air across these fins because it's blocked with, who knows, dead birds, dead bugs, mud. If you live in an area that have cottonwood trees and all the seeds have gone out during the spring, they could be completely clogged into your condenser as well. Another scenario is that your compressor is weak. It is slowly failing. On the highway, when you got the engine RPMs up, it's able to keep up and cool off the car inside the interior. But when you're at a red light at low RPMs or idle, it just doesn't have what it takes to keep it moving. That would have to be checked with these gauges here on an AC machine or just a manifold set of gauges to see what's going on. That's the way you would find out if that's the case there. Another scenario is the orifice tube or the expansion valve, which is a small device like this picture here that actually turns the, free, the refrigerant, I guess you could call it, into cold. That's what actually makes it get cold. That can be failing and as long as you keep the pressures up on the highway it, it is able to manage but when you come to a stop at idle it, it can't keep up. And if your car has an econ button and it's an eco mode and when you come to a stoplight and it shuts off the AC it's very possible that that's what it's supposed to do. If you don't like it turn it off. So make sure to check that as well before you call the mechanic up and scream at him for something that's not his fault. Eco mode is meant to do that, to shut off your AC to save gas. Another and the final scenario is your engine actually could be overheating. Take your eyes off of whatever else you're looking at and look at your temperature gauge. If it's three quarters of the way up or getting close to hot, it's so hot in the engine bay it just can't cool the Freon. Make sure that's taken care of as well. I have actually seen that a few times. My AC won't cool. No joke. Your engine is cooking. No wonder it won't cool. Oh! So make sure to check that as well. Okay, wizard. I just took my car to the shop, and why did I just get a quote for $2,000 to fix my air conditioning? Really, that comes down to is it a good shop, a reputable shop, or if it's a shady shop. It could be that you're a little low on Freon and all you need is a recharge. And trust me guys, every system in America will leak its Freon out in its lifetime. They all will. You say, well, they can't be a leak. They're not supposed to leak. They all will leak. Every car on earth will leak its Freon out by the end of its life. It happens. If you get the grinding noise the that Mrs. Wizard just talked about and you take it to a shop and they say it's going to be two grand, it probably is going to be two grand because they're going to replace all the components I just talked about so that your system's clean and you get to keep a valid warranty. That's very important. It also could be that the compressor is bad electrically, but it's a car that's really hard to get to. It takes five or six hours to get the compressor. And the compressor is $600 on an exotic car. It could very, be very expensive. Evaporator cores rarely give any trouble, but they can leak there as well. And the way that you check that, especially if it's a newer car that came from the factory with UV dye in the system, while the AC is running and blowing cold, 
We all know that our cars drip water in the bottom. That's condensation. It's normal. Get a black light, a UV light, and shine it in that water. It should be nothing. It should be just water. But if it glows green like radioactive waste, there you go. You mean like something Skynet would do? Yes, when they tried to nuke the planet. If you see a green color, that means your evaporator core is leaking. I actually had a scenario, you guys have seen Bill in the shop, he has a Triumph TR8, he had the Lotus Esprit Turbo in here, he had a 993. He brought his 993 in and said, I've gone to the Porsche dealership with the certified techs and said my Freon keeps leaking out, every year I have to recharge it. What's wrong? And they actually told him, that's normal, just keep charging it. I did the trick I just showed, I charged it up, put UV dye in it, turned on the AC, and when the water started dripping out on the bottom, I shined my UV light and it was green. I mean, just like my toolbox over there, bright green. Boom! There you go, the evaporator core is leaking. We put a new evaporator core in, he never had to charge it again. Solved. So there you have it, we just did an entire video on air conditioning. Most of the time, just like I mentioned, every car will leak its Freon out over time. Most of the time, cars have leaked out two ounces. It's taken 10 years to leak out two ounces. You're never going to find that leak. The only thing you can do, recharge and replenish those two ounces. It's back working again, happy. Until it becomes a bigger problem with a drastic leak, you just recharge it. So hopefully that can help you guys out with your air conditioning troubles this summer. If you're curious what kind of tools we use to work on AC in this shop, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because there is more cool cars in the shop right now. I'm looking at one that's going to be a really sweet video. Wizard, can we get out of this heat and get into some air conditioning? Yes, it is hot in here. Let's get out of here. Thanks for watching.